Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today we're bringing the zoo live to you from our field research station in Sarasota, Florida. My name is Jason Allen, and I am the lab manager of the Chicago Zoological Society's Sarasota Dolphin Research Program. Today, I appreciate you joining me to talk all about photo ID, or photographic identification, something that I'm very passionate about and have spent most of my career doing. So, what it is, is it's identifying individuals and these can be turtles, or tigers, or hyenas, uh, or whales, or bottlenose dolphins from individual markings that are on the animal. And what we can do with that is follow individuals over time. I think the best thing to do is have a look. Uh, thank you for joining me here in my office, and we'll have a look at some dorsal fins and talk about how we identify these dolphins. So here is F286, and this is a normal bottlenose dolphin dorsal fin. The leading edge is here, and the trailing edge is here. And many dolphins end up with these little missing parts of their trailing edge of their dorsal fin. We call these nicks and notches. These do not heal back over time, so once they're there, they're permanent, although they can change. And you can see that the dolphins are different from each other. So we can see that this dolphin on the left is different from this dolphin on the right. And that's how we identify them. We go out on the boat with uh, long lenses and we have a permit to approach them closer than 50 yards and we take photos of their dorsal fins to identify the individuals. We can know who they are and who they're with and what they're doing. And we can do this over time, month by month, year by year, and decade by decade. Some of these dolphins can look very similar. And so we spend a lot of time not just looking at these large features, but really dialing in on these small features here on the fins. Let's have a look at some of these. So we can see that at first, these three fins look very similar, but if we look at them more closely, we can see that the top notch of this one looks a little different than the other two, and the middle part of these look very different from each other. So while it seems easy at first to match these, we actually spend a great deal of time and uh, have folks that are highly trained to do this reliably and accurately over and over again. So what can we do with this? With this, we can follow these animals throughout their lives. These fins can change as their lives go on. So here's an animal 2194. And animals will often scratch each other with their teeth. We call these rake marks. And you can see that these rake marks have led to new notches in its fin. But our staff from this notch at the top have identified that this is still the same dolphin, and we are able to follow it over its life and tell where it goes and what it does. So these notches can come from other dolphins, as we see here. They can also naturally occur from sharks. This is F233. And you can see that F-233 had a bit of an encounter with a shark last year. She survived, but this notch here will now be with her for the rest of her life. And now it looks like this here. And it helps us identify her over time. These dolphins can also acquire marks through not-so-natural ways. This is F-222. A few years ago, unfortunately, he was hit by a boat in his dorsal fin and was cut in three places and is now sort of folded over and missing part of his dorsal fin. Thankfully, he survived, and we see him uh, almost every month here in Sarasota Bay. 
Dolphins can also get entangled in fishing line. This is Joker. You can see some more of these parallel marks called rake marks here. But Joker also has some notches in the top of his fin that are consistent with monofilament fishing line entanglement. And he also has some uh, entanglement scars on his mouth, which is how he ended up with the name of Joker. So with this, we can identify and track the dolphins, as I mentioned, over days, weeks, months, years, and then decades. And we have learned that they live in Sarasota Bay. They don't move around, they don't migrate. Sarasota Bay is their home. They live here year round, and they live here over multiple generations. Here is F233, who we talked about earlier, getting the shark bite notch here in her fin. This is her mother, F-159, who has lived here her whole life. This is F-159's mother, F-131, who you can see also had a little bit of a tangle with a shark recently. And then F-131's mother, FB-59, and going all the way back, and some of these are scanned slides, so they're gonna be a little bit fuzzy, is FB-19. So we know five generations of this lineage that have lived here in Sarasota Bay and made calves and fed and enjoyed uh, the, the waters here. So what we can also do is uh, follow these dolphins and understand the things that are happening to their lives and the cumulative impacts. As I mentioned, unfortunately, sometimes these dolphins are entangled in monofilament fishing line. Here is a photo of one dolphin, F314, who has some fishing line in its dorsal or its uh, fluke, excuse me, um, with a team of uh, rescuers and veterinarians and uh, many of our fine collaborators. We went out and temporarily restrained this dolphin and the veterinarians cut the line free and now we're, we're using photo ID we are able to track this dolphin and know that it is still alive and well here it is and it was seen just last month uh, from land which is why the photo is a little bit fuzzy but uh, nonetheless we have a photo of it we know that it's alive and well and that the rescue efforts uh, worked out Another dolphin here in Sarasota Bay is F316. It also had monofilament line coming off of its dorsal fin here. And we were able to see it recently. We did a similar rescue and we were able to see it recently with some other dolphins in Sarasota Bay and then match that to its catalog photo uh, with the nicks and notches that are here. So I hope this gives you a little bit of a, of a glimpse of what we do here in terms of identifying the dolphins and tracking them over time. Um, remember that when you are out enjoying uh, dolphins in the wild, please stay at least 50 meters away at all times. When we approach dolphins, we uh, are able to do so using a, a National Marine Fisheries Service permit. Also, there'll be a link in the, in the comments to check out our Nicks and Notches, which is our annual summary, and you can learn all about all the different research that we do with these dolphins here in Sarasota Bay, much of it with the dorsal fin Nicks and Notches that are here, and I, being able to identify these individuals over time. And with that, I want to um, thank you all for joining me in my office here today uh, as we uh, bring the zoo to you from our Field Conservation Laboratory, uh, Chicago Zoological Society, Sarasota Dolphin Research Program here in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, we look forward to answering uh, any questions you have in the comments, so check back and we'll get to those just as soon as we can. Thank you very much.